worship the Lord together. conquerors through him who loved us. Amen. Count on one thing. The 
same God that never fails will not fail me now. You won't fail me now in the waiting. The same God who's never late is working all things out. Working all things out. Oh yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. When my heart is heavy All my days Oh yes I will Now on one thing The same God that never fails Will not fail me now You won't fail me above circumstances, situations, trials, we are safe in the arms of our God. Thank you, Lord, for who you have called us to be, all because of your matchless grace. Thank you. 
take a moment to consider the worth and the value of our Lord, what he means to us in our hearts. Lord, there are pictures in our minds of victories and trials you have brought us through time and time again. And we see this long cord of your faithfulness that extends from eternity past to this moment and will go on forever. You are the faithful one. We can count on you. Thank you, Lord. What things were gained to me, those I have counted lost for Christ. Lord, teach us to consider any competing thing to be dung, rubbish, compared to the excellence of your knowledge, knowing you situation by situation, gleaning, feasting, seeking diligently. As the psalmist cried out, oh, that my ways were directed to seek your precepts. But Lord, by grace, you give us direction. You are the straight one. Thank you, Father, the upright one. You are worth this pursuit, this seeking. Let's sing that line again. I'd rather have Jesus than anything. I'd rather have Jesus than anything. Blessing be upon this service. In Jesus' name we pray. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, we pray and thank you for the Holy Spirit, our teacher tonight, and the assembly. Lord, Jesus, for our country, for the government of our country, for wisdom for your Holy Spirit, for the preachers and pastors, for churches, for university campuses. Please save key people on campuses who will have a voice and an impact, professors and teachers in public schools and in politics and Save, Lord, athletes and speak to our nation and bring conviction and grace, reveal grace and show grace and send your spirit into the hearts and the minds of people, God, and angels coming and going. We are troublous times and we pray for this, God. Europe, Africa, Asia, Lord, our people, every messenger, every servant, the smallest little maiden messenger who told Naaman about a prophet, the weakest of us, Lord, Latin America, Pastor Stan, the servants, thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Before you are seated, uh, let's have a few minutes of prayer. So the way you can do it is uh, just go to somebody you don't know. I mean, not your friend, but somebody you don't know. Just go and just say, I've never prayed with you. Let me have a few minutes of prayer with you. Okay, go ahead.
Okay, amen. That's great. All right, we're going to run the microphone to uh, Pastor Dan Sergioni. He's going to uh, encourage you to be a part of a great event on Thursday. Thank you. Okay, so I remember Pastor Schaller saying um, in Exodus 13, 14, the sons, when they say, what is this? I'm going to tell them it's Thanksgiving outreach, <clears throat> and this will be year 40. And I'm thinking 40 is like the completion of something. Uh, out of the desert and then into the promised land. So maybe this year will be the best year we ever had. And the more people that show up, the better it is. So uh, we're going to go to the same place. I looked around all through the town, and I think uh, they're at Save a Lot there on uh, Monument and Milton, right on the corner of Milton and Monument. If you uh, need any questions um, answered, you can call me at 410-624-9955. I'll give that again in a second. Uh, bring your children if you can. The young ones, it's really great for them. It's, you know, to some of you who have never been there, haven't, uh, haven't gone evangelizing, it's real easy for your young ones to go out evangelizing. There's a whole crowd of us. We're safe. We got people to take care of problems. And uh, if anybody wants to volunteer their time or anything, then we'd love to have that. So we're going, we'll meet here at 8 o'clock right in front of the family center. Uh, 8 o'clock, and we'll give a little devotion and uh, kind of the rules and regulations of what we do out there, and uh, you'll love it. Okay, so if you, can, if you can come out, it's only in the morning, so you can continue your Thanksgiving with your family and stuff later. We're usually done by 11 o'clock. You don't have to stay there for any length of time. You can come and go as you please, and there's a parking lot there, so it'll be easy to park your car. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, before uh, the offering, just a few words to uh, set up our service tonight for our theme and our subject. Uh, so turn to 1 Corinthians 14. I saw a photo of uh, the Fed Hill Group and the Baltimore uh, folks in Tennessee. Uh, and a huge group of people were in Tennessee and uh, big smiles and a lot of sunshine. It's, it's beautiful. It was beautiful to see that. Um, our, our theme is, I mean, one of the subjects for tonight is, um, you ready for this? It's going to be fun. I mean, you're going to work on this a little bit with each other. It's like a terrible subject on one hand, but on the other hand, it's something many of you old veterans the old dinosaurs in, in the ministry know the subject. Ready? Okay. Uh, party spirits. Oh, oh, no. Oh, no. Okay. Party spirits. What is a party spirit? Party spirits. Have you ever seen, have you had that uh, party spirit? Have you been in a group? where there was a party spirit. Have you seen a party of Christians in the flesh operating in a party spirit? Have you ever seen that happen? Okay, so all the air just left the room, I know. Okay, turn to 1 Corinthians 14 in verse um, 30, uh, 32. It's a great verse. And the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. 1 Corinthians 14, 32. Oh, there it is. And the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. So you're going to have to do a little work on this. This is just the warm-up. And then, you know, we're going to give a message. And by God's grace, we're going to say some things, so it'll be a good night tonight. So uh, I want you to feel comfortable where you're sitting, that who you can talk to. You can make a group of a few people 
or just the person next to you, and just questions go like this. Do you know what he's talking about? What is a party spirit? You know, what does it mean to be sentimental with a group of people? And the sentimental relationship with the people becomes more important than God and truth. That the wound and the hurt and the personalities involved has a lot of energy and people are thinking and feeling and connecting but when it comes to God and the Holy Spirit the party spirit has more power than the mind of Christ and the will of God for people it happens I'm not speaking about this because we have this as a problem in the church contrarily we don't have it. By the way, the turkey dinner was great today. 850 people served by 50 volunteers in 30 minutes. Everybody fed and watered and put out to pasture. <laughs> it all happened today. Thank you, Lord Scotty Dubay, Harold Bogardis, Bobby Berinsky, Kathy Ryan, a whole team of people. Thank you. Great job. That was not a party spirit that did it. No, oh no, it was the Lord in the body of Christ that did that and blessed us. And it was simple, very big project. But many of us, we, I don't hear any, it's not complicated. I don't feel people are fighting or thinking, and why does he get, and, uh, and the whole thing, you know, the parking lot and the, ovens and the, the turkey and this isn't fair and that's not right and many other things that happen with people. We are the most complicated thing on the earth, also the most dangerous. And we can mess up churches and families and each other very easily. Has it ever happened to you? Has it ever happened to you? You can talk about it. Don't bring up any names. We're not going into names, but we're going into principle. Have you ever seen a church ripped apart by party spirits? Okay, nothing enough said about that from my point of view. But I want you to just kind of, any Bible verses you have. Look at this verse. The spirits of the prophets. It's me, a pastor, and you, too. We are subject to each other. We're subject to God. And, it, and Jesus said, if the tree is good, it will bear good fruit. And I would say that that turkey dinner is just one expression of good fruit. When it's done without complication, without accusation, without a party group of people sitting out in the parking lot steaming and fuming and fussing and angry, this and that, and when that does not happen, when the Spirit of God fills us and leads us in love and in faith and in simplicity, that's a good church. Brother and sister, that's a good church. Thank you, God. That's the spirit of God. That's a blessing. That's the grace of God. But have you ever had the other? Have you had that? Okay, so uh, go ahead and, you know, enjoy that. Oh, well, be quiet if you don't have anything good to say. <laughs> okay, go ahead.
Turn with me to Exodus, and I'll get the chapter in a second. Many of you, read, when you read the Bible, you know where it is in the chapter, but you don't remember exactly, right? You know that, Exodus 32. Yeah, okay. That's so amazing. By the way, I, yeah, I, I want to say the turkey dinner was awesome. Have I already said that? <laughs> okay, yeah, that, that was, it was good. <laughs> you guys are looking at me like you're worried, you know. Like. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Moses uh, returns and from the mountain, and he said, verse 25, when Moses saw that the people were naked, for Aaron had made them naked unto their shame among their enemies. Verse 25, do you see that? You know, when he saw they were naked, there are leaders that will say, you know, I don't see anything. I don't see it, and I don't, don't bother me. I don't want to get involved. It's a conflict. They're naked, that's fine. Maybe that's the way, you know, things are changing. In the 21st century, they can be naked. Right? But this is the nature of the ministry that we can never lose. Their renewed mind, where we see it from God's point of view. I don't, we don't care about what our culture is saying. They will say nakedness is normal. Nakedness is what's now going on. Haven't you seen the movies and, the, and it's on and on? And Moses is saying, Oh, no. No, can't happen. Okay? So you, you and I are to be spirit-filled, and that means we will be different. And if you can't stomach that, then your, your, your fallback will be a party spirit, or your fallback is just carnality. And then there's no God in your life. Yes, you are saved. We, we hope so. Yes, you are saved. If you are saved, you are. But if you can't stomach the battle, that if you can't have, you know, if you're not looking for God in your life, and you go, you say, oh, their nakedness, oh, you know, yes, we've been having a party for many hours now. You know, Moses, why don't you move along? Go back up on your mountain. And Moses, Moses saying, no, because... That's the, I, let's all go home if we don't have God here. Amen? Let's all go home if we're not seeking God. Let's all go, because I'm not into playing the games. How about you? No way, we're not here for that reason. So that, that's a good point. Verse 25 says, he saw they were naked. Verse 26, then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, who is on the Lord's side? That's it. Who's on the Lord's side? He didn't say who's on my side. He said who's on the Lord's side. That's was, that was a, that a good point. I'm not following Moses' charismatic personality. I'm following the Lord. And if he's on the Lord's side, I'm on his side. I'm with him. This isn't a party spirit. This is the Holy Spirit. Yeah, Moses is, uh, is saying, who's on, my, who's on the Lord's side? Verse 26, let him come unto me. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him. And he said unto them, thus saith the Lord God of Israel, put every man his sword by his side. Well, this is very severe. And go in and out from gate to gate throughout the camp. And slay every man his brother, every man his companion, every man his neighbor. There's a sword between us. You know, um, you, when, when Pastor Stevens in October 2003 asked Pastor Chevelli and I to be elders, he wanted to add us to the elder board. And, um, and we went up there to his house and... Um, and he asked us to do that, and he said, I'll be back in a month. I want you, he said to me, preach the first two weeks, and then Pastor Belly preached the next two weeks. And, and we were um, looking for God. And uh, we became friends in the Lord, of course. We were already, and just like we all are, we all are in the Spirit. 
There's no, it's not personality rapport. It's we got a sword, but hopefully I want to have a sword in my life. I want in my mind a renewed mind. And when it comes to Pastor Shabelli and I, I don't want to have any personality rapport. I want to have spiritual life and fellowship. And if he's wrong, he could be corrected. If I'm wrong, I can be corrected. And if you're wrong, you can be corrected. And if I'm wrong, you can correct me. Because we're subject to each other. And we're looking for God. And it means a sword regarding our flesh. Pastor Stevens wrote in a devotional thought, I think this is, is that right, Jen? Is this a devotional thought from his book? The first hindrance against unity in the body is the influence of party spirits. Party spirits reveal the influence of personalities instead of the person of the Holy Spirit. Evidenced by cliques, these spirits hinder unity in the body. In the early church, Paul reproved the Corinthians. Party spirits have outward conditional unity based on sympathetic, sentimental relationships. There are people that don't want to be with others unless they feel their same wound, sentiment, and have the same understanding. These sympathetic feelings of understanding people that are hurt we say to these people that we love them and understand that because we all have been in that category. I feel a little bit afraid of being in a group of people maybe taken advantage of, maybe hurt, feeling afraid of being rejected. We are saying to all the people of the world today that it's so often when you are born of God and start to eat at the table and God feeds your new man and you start to understand, I have a life and this life is a new one. I can actually afford to be vulnerable because my internal identity and my sense of who I really am is healthy. I'm not a hurting person. I'm actually a minister. To go from a person who turns inward and feels offended that people don't understand them and to become a minister to minister to others. But party spirits are different. They have outward conditional unity based on sympathetic sentimental relationship. This is superficial unity. Of course they can get together and all feel one another's pain and understand how they are feeling and how they are wounded and how unfair it is. And they can all talk about it and all congregate in a party. Let me make a point here. We have grief share here in our ministry with Pastor Tom Sleva. He does a great job. People are hurt because they've lost a loved one. They need to come together according to however they want to do this. It's up to them. But grief is something different from what this is referring to. This is a, a pain and a feeling of inferiority or even contrarily pride and superiority. And both are wrong. I am inferior, I am superior. And the superior people can get together and the inferior people can get together. And this is just uh, contradicts what happens in the body of Christ. One other part here, guarding against disunity. Satan is constantly doing everything in his power to divide the unity among members in the body. First he tries to divide hearts then he tries to divide the mind because he knows if a man has two masters or is double-minded, he will be unstable in all his ways. <clears throat> the first hindrance, let's see. The second major hindrance to unity is the person in the body of Christ is personality appreciation or personality rapport in relationships rather than Christ-centered doctrinal rapport. Let me explain that for a second. There's a brother. He's not a particularly, like, like, like he's not a outgoing, but he's humble. He, he doesn't talk much, but he's wise. Uh, he's not like a strong leader, but he is 
very persuaded in his heart as to what he believes. Maybe he is tending to be timid, maybe and shy and kind of withdraw, but he doesn't. He lives by faith. That brother, you can discern his spirit, that he has the spirit of God. And that brother is a special, he's a blessing. And you can see that. This is a beautiful thing in the body of Christ. Because we're not professional people. We're not people that climb the ladder. We're not looking for positions. We are people that are looking for God and be filled with the Spirit and led by the Spirit. And many times these amazing servants of God who are spiritual, they become the, the whole thing. They edify in the body. They are quietly serving. I, I said to somebody recently, what is it you like about this? They said, I love being here. I said, why? I said, they said, this is, I'm, I, these people, they are so, and they use different words. I can't remember exactly, but I knew what they meant. These people, they're just so awesome. They are, they are sweet. They are humble, they are serving, they are available, they are kind, they are faithful people. And I go, oh, it is like that. It's beautiful. Um, so Psalm 133 mentions it, and then the personality report. Oh, I like him. You should hear Apollos. Man, his language, he is so articulate. Wow, well, no, you should hear uh, Cephas, when he preaches, oh, no, my favorite is Timothy. Ah, whew, amazing. Okay, fine. Uh, the, there are the different, but the Corinthians, they had this thing, and they would talk. You know, in Finland, we have had maybe seven different overseeing pastors of the church in Helsinki, and Mika and Samantha are here from that church, and it's so good to have them here for a few days. And, um, and uh, let's see, I was a pastor, then Pastor Morrison, Mati Kordinen, let's see, uh, I don't know, I might be missing some of you, haha, and then there was changes. But you know, the last change, Pastor Yuha said, I'm retiring in January, so one year I'll let you know ahead of time. And, and he isn't retired. I mean, he moved to a smaller city, and he's pastoring and loving people, and he's active. So in one way, he hasn't retired. But he did from the church in Helsinki. So, so we said to the church, pray about who your new pastor will be, but don't talk to each other about it. Like, seek God. That's a great word. Like, I'm going to pray to God, God, who do you want the pastor to be for this through the church? But I'm not going to make a group. Uh, the people that I have, we have our guy, uh, you know, rah, rah, and then we have another group over here. Don't talk about it. Because when you go to God, you don't have to talk about it. You don't go to each other. You go to God and you're quiet. And you pray about it, and you ask God to give us who he wants, and he did it. And that's, you know, Pastor Risa Kuder is now the pastor there. Isn't that beautiful? That makes a lot of sense to me, that, you know, um, in politics, in our church, we don't talk about it. I try not to. It's hard not to, to be honest. Some of it is so obvious, but if it's obvious, then it's obvious and it doesn't need to be talked about. You know, ungodliness, unrighteousness, you know, and so on. Okay, so, but uh, uh, why? Because I would like everybody to come here and hear about God and not be offended. And because we don't have... Uh, we're not, we're not representing a political party. We are more, we are making the effort that Jesus Christ should be seen and heard and God can take care of people in regards to how they vote. 
And they stand before God as to how they think and think and feel and live like we all do. And in many ways, that's all private. It is. You have privacy. And people are not in your business. That's also a great point. That God has, God has uh, promised us to fill us with his spirit so that we could know. That we could know who Jesus is. And when we know who Jesus is, we love Jesus. And when we love Jesus, we love the book. And when we're loving this, we are loving each other. And we have this amazing uh, spirit that we drink, the spirit of God, and not, not a personality rapport. Now, another little point. I, I feel this all relates, but I, I'm happy to speak about it because, because it's, it's beautiful. Um, when we were living in Hungary, I said to the Hungarians something I, I can't really say here so easily, and it's this, that I am here, but I'm also leaving. I am going. But I'm here, and I, I'm, I'm a pastor who says hello, and I'm also a pastor that says goodbye. And when I say goodbye, I expect you to be mature people, and I expect you to get, get over it, and you receive whatever God is giving to this local, uh, this local congregation, whether I am part of it or I am not here, and somebody else is here. But you are to discern the spirits. And you're to recognize when the Spirit of God is speaking and leading and ministering to us, and we recognize that because we are a spiritual group of people. So in our previous pastorate with Dr. Stevens, when he was gone, like people couldn't process that. Why not? Why not? Well, he's my pastor. Yeah? But aren't you following God? Don't you have God? Aren't you following God? Right, isn't the Holy Spirit the one that's showing us who Jesus is? Are you following God? Are you able to love the brethren? Are you able to live through difficult times? Are you able to lay down your life? Are you able to be spirit-filled? Or is there some party spirit that divides and sows discord? Yeah. That happens. So, doctrinal rapport. What does that mean? I love your person. I love Pastor Steve. I love all these guys over here on my right. I love all the greater grace pastors at the convention. But we, the only way we survive is doctrinal rapport. It's not personality. Well, I only hang out with Pastor Steve. He's my buddy because I feel warm and fuzzy and warm and he's a good guy. He loves me. He will never say anything to me that will offend me and so on. Really, the cross is the basis of our relationships and the cross means really you can't offend me. I mean, you, can, you, can't, you actually can but I got to get over it by taking up the cross. And I got to process what you're saying because maybe what you're saying is true and my flesh is reacting. And I stay away from you because I don't like it. But that's not maturity. That's not spirituality. That's not edifying. We are the body of Christ that should take a rebuke we are the body of Christ that should be built up in truth. We are the body of Christ that does not have personality rapport. And I don't care who you are or who I am. I mean, that's the principle. In reality, I do get hurt or I do care. But on the other hand, like, so what? It's not about you and me, is it? It's not about you and me. It's about something greater, isn't it? 
So that's why we've assembled, and that's how we live and grow. And um, we, 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 the maturity is possible like that we would live many, many years of feeding and drinking the Spirit of God and being reproved and corrected. Now, one of the Finnish people were talking to me today, and there's a, pro, there's a contest in Finland with a Finnish politician who is a Christian, and there was the gay pride in Finland, and these are just general information. You can find it all out by Googling it and reading about it if you want to, but I want to just say it, just a little knowledge I have. Gay pride, Lutheran Church is, is for the gay pride. Okay, Lutheran Church, the bishops and the people there, they're into that, they are embracing it and they are for the homosexual thing. This Finnish politician, in her speech at the Gay Pride, I, I think it was at that event, she read from Romans chapter 1. And she got in a lot of trouble for it. Now there's a court case about hate speech and what she has done. She did something that the bishops couldn't do. Like she did something, the Bible, she just read the Bible. Like she did something, and now she's in trouble. On the other hand, the country is divided. Of course it is. Because homosexuality is a sin. Like adultery and lying and gossiping and many other sins in the Bible. Oh, you offended me. It's like, whatever. Of course I did. Because uh, that's not what I'm here for. I'm not looking to provoke people or offend them in that sense because love cares about people. We care about people. We're not hateful. We care about people. The best way to care about people is to be spirit-filled. I'm not looking for a fight. Marijuana, smoking marijuana. I don't speak about that very often, but every once in a while. Or alcohol, every once in a while. I don't see any good in it. Many successful people don't touch it. Jewish people generally don't drink because it's not useful. You get in trouble when you drink by how you talk, car accidents, and many other things. And besides, it costs a lot of money. Okay, so leave me alone. I don't drink, okay? So, I mean, I'm talking to you, not like the pastor, you know. Okay, just saying, just, just saying. Why are you so sensitive about the thing? Wait, wait, sin is sin. Okay, you got a problem with that? It's like, take it up with God. And I'm saying it from God. It's like, oh, you cannot do. Okay. That's an interesting because the world, they want us to conform to the world. Be not conformed to the world, but be transformed with a spiritual mind. And a spiritual mind, I don't know Steve Andalonis, almost I don't even see him, but I know him. Guys, I have, we have the same spirit. I don't even see him. One time I met Pastor Satellite in China. I, I met him one time when, many years ago when Jeff and Nancy Phelps were living in China, I met him 22 years later, I met him again, and we're the same. 22 years later, it's like I was with him five minutes ago. It's the same, I don't even see him, but I see him. That's the spirit of God. That's in the body. That's our fellowship. That's what you pray for. We pray for each other, and I just happen to be the guy in the pulpit tonight, and I'm able to say the things that you know resonate in your spirit and in your heart because you have a renewed mind. And that renewed mind, you know, is the Lord's mind. And so um, be careful of this. One last thing in this devotional booklet. The third major hindrance to godly unity is subjectivity. Many Christians are plagued with subjectivity in their frame of reference. It happens when an individual voluntarily allows the unknown, invisible impressions from his psychological environment to overtake his emotions. 
rather than depend upon the divine standard of objective truth. That has happened to me. I found myself very emotional. And I, that's always an indicator to me that I need to kind of quiet down and draw near to God and say, God, I don't know why, but I'm emotional, I'm upset, or I'm emotional, and I'm worried, or I'm afraid. I know about it. I'm a human being like all of us, and there are times when maybe it's just not right. And so, uh, so in my heart, I can quiet down and seek him in simple prayer. I say, God, help me, teach me. I might read a psalm or quiet down or focus or concentrate or be quiet, not talk. If you are talking out of your subjectivity, you may be energizing the emotion. And you may be, you may be provoking the subjectivity and provoking the emotion. And you get more and more disturbed by the things that are bothering you. When you make a complaint, it might be the power, the things that you say in your complaint. I don't mind. You can make your suggestions and talk, but do it in the spirit of God. Do it with wisdom. Do it with a renewed mind. A lot happens with a renewed mind and how we're able to talk to somebody. Yesterday, I was with the Bible College students in Washington, D.C., and I had to make a phone call, but I, wa I wasn't in a good state of mind to make the call. And it was bothering me. I needed to make a call. And I couldn't. I said, no, it's not good for me to call right now. I can't do it. I'm too emotional. I can't make that call. So I put it aside. Isn't that interesting? Sending an email. Put it, save it in your drafts or whatever it's called. I put it aside and do not send it. And wait on it and pray about it and have a renewed mind and look at it again and think about it. Too much talking, too much reaction, too much emotion, too much sub subjectivity. And because uh, I get upset now, now uh, you know, I produce that kind of thing in my own heart. And I might find other people that agree with me. And that's not a bad thing. It could be a good thing. But I'm just trying to cover the whole subject and think about it and help us understand it. I hope that's happening. Okay. Lastly, let's say that um, in um, Psalm 133, Behold, how good and how pleasant, but brethren, to dwell in unity. When we dwell in unity... It just is so beautiful. We can feel it. We can feel the simplicity of it, the beauty of it, the presence of God in that unity. We're just um, blessed people. There God has commanded a blessing. He commanded a blessing. Why? Because I, I kind of got my life before God, and I, I found love in the body and the unity. And there God said, you know, you folks, you have the renewed mind. This is my nature, and I'm commanded a blessing there. And there it is. I don't think I've ever gone through anything more terrible than a church split. I, I hate, I never saw anything like that. Never in my whole Christian life. I never saw anything more terrible than a church split based on personalities. And by the way, if I'm a pastor, the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophets. And I'm trusting my elders and the body of Christ to help me that we would walk right on and live because this is a huge thing that God has entrusted us with. And that, that is not a, it's not a personality rapport and it's not a charismatic thing. I have, you know, a lot of subjectivity or emotion, but it's just rock solid, a mind renewed with God's love and peace and spirit. And there he is commanded a blessing. And I don't know what that means, except I know what, when he says, I bless you, you are blessed. And that is real. And when we are blessed, we are blessed. It takes a personal cross and some wisdom, and some humility, and some trust, and some faith. 
And when you see something else start happening, it may happen one day. Like, just put on your, you know, just get real wise and watch before God. We're not there, praise God. But we're only a little, little ways away from it, to be honest. I would never think that out there in that parking lot or back there in that parking lot, there would be such hatred, emotion, violent, vi violent speech, some carnal expressions. I would never think that that could happen by spirit-filled people. It cannot. But it happens. It grew, developed by carnality. And that's not going to happen at our watch, hopefully by God's grace. And it didn't happen with Pastor Stevens until the end. And at the end, it was crazy. And we know that. We're not talking about it. We go years without saying anything about it. I don't care about it. It's over and gone. But it's a good lesson and a great warning. There are, by God's grace, there's not any of that Party spirits, but if we are, we are spirit-filled and loving, then we're going to be, we're good. And I'm not saying it because I expect to be leaving here either. I'm, I'm just saying it. Just saying it. One day maybe we'll pull the tape out. We'll go, remember he said that? You know? Remember him? Remember what he looked like? I don't even, I can't even remember him. Okay. Welcome, Pastor Steve. Praise the Lord. And God bless you. Okay, this is an opportunity for unity because we're all going to put money in the baskets. This is the offering. Just um, if you go to 1 Samuel, you can see a story about a man who was leading a family and what he did. There was trouble in the nation, no king. Everyone did what was right in his own eyes. There was conflict in the home. One of his wives was mocking the other wife, who was Hannah, because she didn't have children, so there's trouble there. And he was going to take people to a church where the two sons were evil men at the door, down at the temple, down there to make the offering. What did Elkanah do? He brought his family to church and made an offering. So that's the scripture. You can read it, 1 Samuel. And you can see the result, what happened. Hannah prayed. She got pregnant, and Samuel and the whole nation was changed. So this is an opportunity for unity. Participate in the offering, and you never know what might happen. An amazing miracle in the nation because of this church, right? It could happen, right? A major miracle in Baltimore. They need a lot of them. We need a lot of them here. We need a lot of miracles here, and uh, you can be a part of it. And a miracle in Baltimore could speak to the whole nation, and we could start it right now, all right? Let's, be, let's have the right spirit and let's start a party in Baltimore of the right kind, all right? So let's pray. Lord, just bless this offering in your name. Amen.
Okay, before we uh, dismiss, uh, if you could all bow your heads, close your eyes for a moment. We're going to give an invitation uh, to those who are listening to this message here in this room and online. Um, we'd love you to be a part of the greatest thing that ever happened to this universe, which is the body of Christ, because of the blood of Christ that was shed on the cross. And all you have to do is come unto him in your weakness and your weariness, and believe upon his name. So just believe upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ right now. Ask for his mercy. Recognize yourself as in need and come to him right now. Just pray, Lord Jesus, I need your mercy. I'm a sinner. Save me. If you've said that prayer, that simple prayer, you are a believer and you are a member in particular of Jesus Christ right now. You are a part of us. If you said that prayer, anyone in this room that said that prayer, just raise your hand. Please raise your hand and we uh, can talk to you. We can counsel you about what decision you just made. Greatest decision. Anyone here, anyone online, if you've said that prayer, let us know. It's amazing to be a part of the body of Christ. Yes, we're not perfect in any way. We will be, though. We have a sure promise that we will be in a perfect square city made of golden streets, and you can be with us. Yes, if you're not a believer, call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Be a believer in him. And Lord, we thank you for what we've heard tonight, Lord. Good medicine, Lord Jesus, preventive medicine, the mind of truth that will keep our hearts and guard our hearts from going in the perverse way from being froward people, out of order, on the wrong path. You light our way, Lord Jesus, by things like this. Thank you, Lord. Amen.
Okay, one thing, if, uh, if you were a guest with us tonight, would you raise your hand? Any guests with us tonight? You came on a good night. Amazing. Anyone? No? Okay, thank you. Thank you for being with us tonight. It's amazing. And um, all right, uh, Pastor Ronaldo will be leading a Preacher Boys session for the rap session in here, right? Yep, okay, so if you want to hear um, young men talk about the Word of God, uh, you can stay. Uh, after that, will start in what, 15? 15? 15 minutes, we'll start that. Okay, stand, please. And anyone traveling, just raise your hand if you're traveling this week to visit family and friends. Just raise your hand. Yeah, okay. All right, Lord, you see all those hands. We want your protection on all of them. Uh, we want your, you want them to have divine appointments in their households, in their homes, at their tables. We want, uh, really, we want great reports of people. Yes, Uncle Eddie or Uncle Johnny or Aunt Susie. You've been preaching to her for years. She finally gets saved. Yes, this will be the week. We believe that. All right. Uh, Lord, we thank you for this night, for what we've heard. We ask you to really bless this week, all the preparations, Lord. Let there be no burnt turkeys. Lord Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for everything that you're doing uh, in, our, in our midst as the body of Christ. Lord, thank you, Lord Jesus. We just pray for your protection on us as we go for this week, uh, for all that's happening in us and through us. In Jesus' name, amen. 15 minutes, preacher boys.